Jonathan. Hi. I, I guess this is a question for all of you. Um, it's really general, probably looking way into the future in terms of the effects like um, uh, liability, like um, I, I've forgotten his name mentioned at the front there, but um, in terms of like, I, I love the comment you said about 3D doesn't care what it is or, or, or where it comes from, but because of that fact, I, I'm an interior architect and I came from an industrial back, uh, design background and I kind of went into interiors because of the availability of lots of different materials to build different things. But suddenly this has come about and from just uh, graduating just over 15, 16 years ago, um, this is great for us. And we're seeing people like, uh, I think his name's uh, Enrico Dini, who has this huge printer made uh, that does things out of concrete. But in terms of the liability and IPR, and the availability of this stuff. What, how does that? How does that affect you guys, or is that something that you're not thinking about at the moment? The availability. Cool. We, and um, such a broad access to, to what it can do. Yeah, we uh, when we were down at the Technology Strategy Board Award, we were talking to British Standards down there. Now, British Standards are, do not have anything for additive manufacturing at all. So they are looking at working with companies on developing certain standards, which again would allow the process of ISO, I assume, to come into play. But the problem being at the moment, there's nothing. So you're almost gambling with what you're producing. That's, that's the downside. You've got to convince your customer that what you're producing is as good as what they have, if not better. And that is, that's basically how we've got to approach, uh, approach our future. I, think I, mean, I, I was going to say, I sorry. think IP, um, yeah, regulation, things, yeah, all ethics, all these things, you know, I think... Uh, legislation and governance is running behind what's happening in the sector. Yes, that's well, I'd, also, I'd also say that it's the same as any other product or any other material that you would introduce into a production environment or even an architectural environment is that, you know, if we pass anything to the Formula One boys or to aerospace, they'll test it and test it and test it until they know the limits or they can compare one material to that material. And that is the key. And the more research and the more white papers we get, on the like for like of that and also FEA software. So basically you can have your 3D CAD software and there are some out there now, but it's getting the mechanics of the, it's understanding because each, each 3D printer will have its own characteristics and its own weaknesses with its material and the way that it's built. It's understanding that and putting that into a catalog so that when you go, go with FEA software, you can literally drag those materials into that tool set and then compare like for like and, and look at failure mode analysis and where where the stresses are going to be. Um, and on the flip side of that, once you've got that, you can really push the boundaries. And that's when, you know, when you were talking about structures that aren't, they're not traditional, you know, you're making a structure that is going to give it the best strength, for instance, in a certain direction, or it might have a weight on one side. That's really when, when it will take off. But in our experience, yes, you get a bit of, you get a bit of caution, but we always say, if you go down the product development route, as you should do, as you develop a product and do testing, um, it should be no problem. The problem we have is, you know, you'll get your, your, your one-man band in a garage that, that wants to have this mad idea, and you print something, you send it to them, and they're on the phone straight away going, it's not doing what I wanted it to do. Well, you didn't clarify what, what you wanted it to do. It's asking the customer the right questions before you take the order. And that's partly why... Bureau service is great, but where, where we have an issue is that you can't talk to that customer. It's an email that comes through with a file on, print it in this. Well, we always like to ask the question, what, what is the application? What are you using it for? Because we might think of it in a completely different way and guide them in a, a, and Or actually, there's been many a times where we've turned around to a customer and say, sorry, we can't help you, because it just won't work. You need to look at an alternative method or an alternative material. So, um, but once you get in with a, a, with a design team or um, a company that embraces 3D printing and feels some trust in it, they will actually then lead the R&D to actually make it fail. And that's, that's the process we're in with, with some automotive companies now.